Sleep doesn't come easy in the hospital. You'll lie in bed and sometimes you can't get comfortable. Other times you're just bored. Other times you're just out of your freaking mind in agony. You'll lie there and maybe your roommate is really sick, sicker than you. They'll be up all night throwing up and it takes more than you'd think to sleep with that right next to you. Or maybe you're too sick for a roommate. Maybe you're in the ICU and you got a row of thick metal staples stuck into your stomach like a pre-adolescent Frankenstein. Or maybe you've just got an infection, a bad one. Maybe you've barely moved in days. Maybe you've got a catheter taking away your piss and morphine taking away your pain. You can't think, speaking is iffy. All you want to do is close your eyes and sleep and sleep and sleep. Sleep until the dawn breaks and wakes you from this nightmare. Maybe if you're lucky, for once, you can. Or maybe you'll just lie there and your eyes will adjust to the dark. Maybe you'll count all the shapes on the curtain in the middle of the room. Again, balls and butterflies and elephants. Or maybe you'll turn on the little TV suspended above the bed, nice and quiet so you don't wake anyone else up, and hope that something decent is on, something you can lose yourself in. And maybe you find something, and you get 30 minutes or an hour's respite the whole time dreading the end. Maybe nothing is on, but you leave the TV playing anyways because it's company. Besides, you've got nothing better to do. You'll lie there, surrounded by people, exhausted from the day, and you'll feel alone. If you're feeling good enough, maybe you'll get up, pulling your IV pole weakly beside you. You'll feel the tiles beneath your feet, and you'll be so tired that you can't fall asleep. Maybe you'll have something to read, and you'll take it out into the yellow hallways, and maybe you'll go sit near the nurse's station. Maybe you won't have anything to read, and you'll have to go and ask all the nurses if they have any books. Maybe you just walk around the hallway, making loops, walking past your room, walking past the nurse's station, past your friend's room, past the other side of the nurse's station, then back to your room again. Maybe you'll make another loop, maybe you won't. You've got nothing better to do. And if you're not feeling good enough for that, you'll lie there. Sometimes you can think straight, other times you can't, and your mind runs in crazy circles, fueled by some drug or another, by some drug that was keeping you alive, or maybe by some drug that was killing you slowly. You hear the nurse's intercom just outside the room beep, the nurse's station looking for someone. Sometimes you recognize the room number and you think about them for a little while. Sometimes you recognize the nurse's name, and you know her, and you miss her. So you lie there some more, debating your next move. Sometimes you press the nurse call button. You've got nothing better to do. A voice calls back on the intercom, jarringly loud in the silence. You weakly ask for your nurse for the night, your old friend. If it's a slow night, maybe they say, she'll be right there. Or maybe, if everyone else is having as much trouble sleeping as you are, She'll be there as soon as she can. And you'll lie there waiting. Sometimes your eyeballs will hurt, that's how tired you are. She comes in eventually, edging the door open, light spilling into the room under the curtains. She'll pull them back, the runners on the ceiling screeching, plastic on metal, a familiar sound. You see her and you're comforted. She's like family by now. Maybe you'll lie and say that you're itchy so you can have some Benadryl and maybe get some sleep. And maybe she'll know you're lying because you're only nine years old, but maybe she'll get it anyways. Then there's the rip followed by the sharp scent of isopropyl alcohol in the air. Maybe you'll have an IV if you're doing well, or maybe you'll have that tube running straight into your chest, that tube that never goes away. That tube that, as far as you can tell, is part of you. You hold it close, protectively, as she shifts the tube, and then she gives you the medicine. Sometimes you taste it, sometimes you feel it in under your skin and your veins, a nasty feeling. One of them tastes like iron. It goes into your chest and you get this taste coming up from the back of your throat, a hazy, warm taste that can make you sick if you're not careful. You'll lie there and maybe sleep will finally overtake you. Then you'll be woken up all night, invariably. 
They need to take your blood pressure to get your temperature. A cuff around your arm, whichever one is IV free. Pump, pump, pump. Try to relax. And then a little plastic rod under your tongue or your arm or a little sensor in your ear. The cl they click the protective covering off and if you're lucky, you'll fall back asleep. Then your pump will be an unrelenting electric bugging that becomes the paragon of annoyance. Maybe your infusion is done or maybe your line is bent. A cluded line proclaims a little screed. Or maybe there's a bubble, air in line. You press a tiny white button, silence, and your wish is granted for a few moments. <laughs> you call the nurse, hoping she gets here before the beep comes back. It always starts up again, and you silence it again, but even just one beep gets to be enough to drive you mad. Or maybe your pump doesn't beep, but then your roommate's does, and the curtains do nothing to stop the noise. As you get used to it, you learn how to restart it, to fix your own occlusions, to ignore the air in the line, because it never really matters anyways. Sometimes you'll need blood drawn. It's always at the crack of dawn to get the results early. The nurse comes in, sometimes the same one as the night before, sometimes not, and you moan for them to go away. You just want to sleep. They can't, though. Maybe they can get the blood easy and you can go back to sleep. Maybe they can't. Maybe your IV isn't working right and they have to stick you, and maybe you have bad veins and they miss them. Maybe twice, maybe three times, maybe more. And maybe you cry because you just don't know what else to do and because you just can't do it on your own. But hopefully, if you're lucky and you're loved, someone's there with you. And they hold your hand, and they hold you, and they stay awake with you. They make it all okay, even though it isn't. If you ask me, that's love, and that's what it's all about, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs>